All right. Hi, Jonathan. Uh, All right, Chris, uh, we are at quorum at this point. Uh, just checking, have Ben or Greg joined? All right, uh, Chris, regardless, we are at quorum uh, if you're ready to get things kicked off. Okay. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night. Uh, that was our uh, antitrust policy. Don't do anything stupid. Um, on the agenda today, we have an update on the EU Hackfest, and hopefully we can uh, start closing on that. Um, uh, revisit the Hyperledger Training and Education Working Group proposal <clears throat> with Tracy. Um, uh, Dan would like a few minutes to give an update on Hyperledger Sawtooth. Then um, I'm going to regale you all with uh, the first project report on Hyperledger Fabric. And then we have uh, Hart with a white paper working group update. Uh, update. Does anybody else have anything for the agenda today? If not, then I think we can get going. So, Todd, you're up. Yeah, sure thing. Uh, so, European Hackfest, thank you for your patience here. We have found a venue in Lisbon December 5th and 6th. Uh, events team is just finalizing the contract for that, but we will have the registration site up uh, before the TSC call next week. So, excited to move forward with that. A little bit non-traditional of a venue, but I think it'll work great for this group. Uh, and really excited to close out the year, uh, bringing this back to Europe and... Uh, see everyone one last time. Any Excellent. any questions there? Otherwise, uh, please stand by for registration page and uh, further details in the next few days. Super. All right. Cool. Looking forward to it. All right. Next up is Tracy and the Hyperledger Training and Education Working Group proposal. Uh, Todd or somebody, Tracy, can somebody ping the link into the chat so people can follow along? Yep, one moment. Oh, looks like Dan dropped Thanks, it in. Dan. So, All right. Tracy, are you on today? She may be traveling back from Cybos right now. Um, oh. from, from what I recall last week, uh, we, we can have this discussion, Chris, if you want, or uh, postpone until Tracy's back. Either way is fine, up to you. Um. Well, I was hoping we could review what has actually been changed. There's a number of comments in here. Oh, for Christ's sakes, I hate this stupid window. Um, so there's a number of unanswered questions from Bawa from it looks like this morning or maybe yesterday. Um, Oh, I think we're going to get it. Be right back. Oh, just freaking wonderful. So I have a contractor coming. Um, <laughs> Unfucking believable. He's coming an hour and a half early, so uh, I'm going to have to drop off, unfortunately. Chris, why don't we just move, um, move forward into the updates uh, for now and uh, circle back on this, okay? Yeah, let, let me just uh, do mine because um, this guy's going to be here in a couple minutes. Uh, where's my work? All right, I had it. Oh, he's coming now. Um, sorry about that. I don't have to drop. My wife just got back, so I. No, I can't. Anyway, let's go to the updates then. So Dan is first. 
Okay. Um, so uh, I've asked uh, Zach uh, Delventhal to join us. Zach is one of the one of the Sawtooth maintainers, and he recently finished up a feature that sounds like it's pretty cool, and it's adding a, a new capability that I thought people would find interesting uh, that incorporates telemetry information. And so without uh, further setup, I'll, I'll hand this off to Zach, and, and he'll uh, uh, I've asked him to just do a, a short version of this. And then uh, after the TSC calls, the, the Sawtooth team does a uh, technical forum where everybody is, of course, welcome to join. And uh, we'll be going into greater detail on this uh, new feature. Yeah, hi, folks. Uh, so this is Zach. Um, if I were to click this little gray boxy looking thing, would that share my screen? Oh, no, that just made it full screen. Let's see. Ah, show. There's now an option. We'll do that. You've been given the power. I'm pulling up my screen. You guys see a website? Yep. Excellent. All right. So, uh, yeah, one of the, I think, uh, more interesting potential applications is supply chains. You've got a lot of different partners, a lot of different steps in the chain. Um, I think there's a lot of potential uses to decentralize that, to um, allow for some interesting auditing of the supply chain. So uh, we recently tackled building a uh, proof of concept supply chain app on Sawtooth. Um, builds off some previous work we've done um, and uh, really quickly, we're calling it Asset Track um, because it tracks assets and it does sort of uh, two things. One you might expect, one you might not expect. Um, one is it does uh, provenance. So if uh, we create a user, I did those in the wrong order. So if we create a user and then um, create an asset, um, and this web app is all hooked up to the blockchain, so anything we put in here is going to be uh, built and signed in the browser. The transaction is going to be built and signed uh, in the browser. And uh, let's say 4590. and then uh, submitted onto the blockchain. And we're in dev mode consensus, so it's all very fast. Um, but you can see, uh, we can very easily create an asset. Um, this asset one, two, three, I am the owner of it. Um, it has a location, which brings us to sort of uh, the other little thing, um, which is telemetry data. So um, none of this, so these are just a few fields that I, I picked, I defined for the sort of generic asset type. Um, if we look over here, weights, location, temperature, shock, seem like useful things you might want to track. Um, anything you want could potentially be submitted by like an IoT device or something like that. Um, I've actually got a little script to submit some updates. So if we look at some of the preceded updates I've got, some of them might be more interesting like this uh, light bulb uh, coming from Japan here. Um, and so you can see as an IoT device would be submitting data about um, an asset on the chain, uh, it goes on the chain and then something like this web client here can, be, can reflect those changes. Um, so this was, uh, this was about a one month project. Um, it's still in pretty early stages. Um, there's been some weight fluctuations on that light bulb. Um, but it was interesting. Any questions? Oh. Is this already in GitHub? Can we get it and play with it? Yeah, uh, so it's been spun off onto its own repo, um, which I will uh, 
pop into the chat here. Um, search GitHub. Just, just go to the website. Uh, it is, we're still sort of cleaning it up, I'd say. The deployment story isn't great on it yet, but you can pull it down and um, and if you want to bug me on Rocket Chat for some hackneyed directions to get it running, I can uh, help you with that. And the deployment story will be better shortly. Something we're working on now. There are the, the beginnings of a Docker Compose file. Uh, any other questions? So is that map continuing to uh, update as your script is running? Oh yeah. Yeah, so if we uh, go back to the map. We've made it to the US. This is a very fast plane. Probably some gravitational waves pushing it along with those weight fluctuations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's sort of, you know, that's the least exciting part of the presentation though. Yeah, all of these uh, all of these aspects continue to update. I think temperature is probably a better one to look at for graphs. That one updates a little more frequently. But uh, you can see as there's been temperature fluctuations, and this is all in real time, so you can sort of see the difference between uh, when I started, when I created it, and when I actually started the script running. You can see updates are coming a lot more frequently now. How do I? Get so each of those updates is like a transaction of the. I, I can paste the the, the GitHub URL, <clears throat> but each of those updates is a is a full blockchain transaction. Then, yep, yeah, each update's a blockchain transaction. Um, the permissioning about who can send updates is all pretty flexible. Uh, we have this concept of uh, owners, custodians, and reporters. So as um, you know. Uh, a item gets physically transferred between people, um, you transfer custodianship as it uh, legally gets transferred, the ownership, you transfer that. And then reporters are just public keys that are authorized to submit updates on one or more of these properties. Um, so you can have different reporters for every IoT sensor, you know, one for temperature, one for whatever, um, and authorize them individually or what have you. Okay, so we can kind of think about those like oracles or something about for that particular um, asset. Yep. Great. Well, I think we'll be um, we'll get in. Go ahead. A uh, question. Uh, I know that you wrote about it on mailing list. Uh, how open would you be about writing uh, a blog post about it, describing all of it uh, to wider public? You know, making sure that our community knows about it. Sounds good to me. Um, I think I want to. I want to get the Docker Compose file finished up, so there's not like a ten-step startup process on this thing. But uh, but yeah, once that's done, write a blog post, get it out there. Great. So if you could email me uh, at marta at linuxfoundation.org, I'll work with you on it. Cool. All right, well, thanks for uh, giving us the teaser on that, Zach. And then in the next hour, uh, we'll be going into greater depth on the, the architecture and implementation, I think. Sounds good. Cool. Looks okay. great, thanks. Thanks. All right. Next up is Fabric. Got everything? Okay, um, so has everybody got the link? Then I think we can get going. So this is the first um, of the uh, Hyperledger project um, quarterly report uh, readouts um, following the template that we all adopted and approved the past couple of weeks. Um, and um, so I'll just sort of give the the, the synopsis here in the, in the hell. So we, we continue to grow and 
and mature um, uh, following our one out release, I basically used the past quarter uh, uh, elapsed to, um, to, f to fill this out. And we published our first release in the uh, very beginning of July. So it's, it's roughly been three months. Um, and um, we've got a, a growing mix of contributors. Basically, we're at a point where IBM comprises 42% of the overall contributors and um, amazingly enough we're at 49 percent of the commits so again we're seeing um, a significant balancing of um, adding additional community contributors and having their contributions uh, growing over time which is which is really good to see there's been uh, since the initial uh, one data release we've had 69 developers comprising 14 companies and a bunch of individuals that I can't obviously figure out if they're affiliated with anybody because everybody used their GitHub ID and I don't know these people. Oh, stop it. Jesus. Um, uh, uh, 443 commits, uh, about a half, a half a million lines of code changed. Um, and um, uh, we've published three bug fix releases. Uh, about once a month, um, we published a bug fix release, and um, we're working towards a 1.1 preview re release that we hope to get out by the end of the month. Um, and that should include about 21 new features uh, uh, or improvements to performance and scale, uh, along with obviously with bug fixes and so forth um, sprinkled in. Um, in terms of the chat and email and Stack Overflow and the various forums that you can ask questions and so forth, there seems to be um, quite a bit of uh, activity. Um, continuing, we have about 750 questions in Stack Overflow. There's been, there was a spike of questions uh, and traffic on the mailing list in uh, August. I think that was due to the, the publication of the 1.0, people starting to pick it up and use it having initial set of questions um, and uh, but that settled down and now we're about where we were with the traffic with you know roughly about uh, you know between 175 and 200 uh, messages um, a month and you know lots of follow-up so most the most of the messages have um, uh, you know follow-on uh, chains of one or more people responding and so forth so it's it's pretty good uh, pretty good activity. I guess the couple of areas that I think we could obviously improve is the um, uh, the visibility and the transparency. I wouldn't say transparency because we're we're totally transparent in terms of all our planning. Problem is, is that we're not doing a very good job of planning, um, and um, and it's hard for people from the outside to sort of figure out what we're up to and where we are in terms of cutting a release and so forth. So um, I've I've been in talks with. Dave Husby and with Brian uh, and and Tracy to see if we can't get some help um, getting Jira configured to be better and more useful, um, especially in terms of external people tracking and so forth. So I I think and uh, if Dave is on, you know, he can he can confirm. But I believe that um, they they've been authorized to go and and find a uh, an expert. Uh, as a contractor, at least for a while, and uh, to work with not just the Fabric team, but any others that are using Jira to uh, help get it configured uh, more suitably to help uh, with planning and so forth. Because right now we're just basically using the out of the box basic Jira sucks <laughs> uh, uh, configuration, and uh, we could really use some help in doing things like adding story points to. Um, uh, to bugs and so forth so that we can actually do uh, planning and, and, and measure velocity and so forth to figure out if something's going to make a release or not. Anyway, that's, um, that's basically where we're at. Um, it says all of that in the, uh, in the deeper dive places there. Maintainer diversity that didn't get covered above um, is actually increased because Ben and Morali went to State Street. And so now we actually have 10 IBMers, three from digital, uh, I'm sorry, uh, three from State Street, two from digital assets, Hasera, 
Huawei, and Salesforce. So questions, comments? Nice, nice job on that, Chris. Was was it? Uh, how hard was it to pull that stuff together and work with the uh, the form? Uh, it took me about. Uh, I want to say it took me less than an hour to do. You know, the write up, gather the information. I, I you know, I have, I ran some uh, analytics and so forth to count people and so forth. Uh, that really only takes a few minutes, but there's a little bit of setup, and then most of it was just sort of going through and trolling Jira to get the, the set of epics and features that we're working on and uh, and those types of things. It, so it, it took it took less than an hour, basically, to, to pull it together. You know, I think we should use that video tool that Dan showed us back in the day, right? To oh, yeah, I, yeah, we did that for the 1.0 release. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it's so that. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that Gary with 1.103 yeah, will, yeah, pull his weight. We'll update that or something. Can you do one of those maps that Dan showed in Chicago of all the code yeah, change? Exactly. This one. That's yeah. what we were just talking about. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Exactly that. Dan posted the video, Mark. You can see it from the chat. All right. Thanks. I was in the wrong window. If there are no questions, no comments, uh, do, uh, Tracy's not on, so I'm not sure if we were supposed to vote on these, just acknowledge them and record them uh, again. Well, they're recorded, they're in the wiki, but. Um, yeah, many people are here, like most of the Elements Foundation guys, the Happy Ledger guys are here in, in, in Toronto, you know, so Tracy's here. Dave is giving a talk just now about blockchain security, and I don't uh, know if Brian's still around. Yeah, every, well, most of you are at the stand. Well, and I guess we're um, good to go then. I don't think we need to have a, a vote unless anybody feels the need for a vote. No, oh, I don't know what we would be voting. Yeah, right. For there's no like it's not a proposal, it's a report. I think it's good. Uh, all right. And then to follow so up on the, what you were saying, I mean, in the meantime, uh, we have to thank uh, Dave Inion from IBM to try to to fill in the gap that Chris was talking about with we got to Jira and what getting a higher level view of what's going on. He's actually been maintaining a spreadsheet that kind of gives a status update of where we are. Yeah. So the goal is to basically replace it with something that would be in Jira directly. So we wouldn't have to manually maintain that on top of it. Yeah, yeah so look, I'm, I think I don't know, I'm, I'm not a big fan of spreadsheets. Number one, number two, it also then again, this this provides you know yet another place where there's a source of truth about where we are from a release perspective that isn't necessarily immediately obvious to people coming in from the outside. That's that's my main problem. I've tried to in our dashboard, as noted in the in the report, um, provide um uh, one of the tiles in the dashboard you know gives a an update on where we are with those uh, issues the, the problem of course is that not all of those uh features or epics are um kept up to date from a comment perspective to give a sense of where people are and how likely they are to finish the work and so forth so and that's a lot of what's in the, the spreadsheet um i think it's possible to do these kinds of things to um you know, to configure Jira certainly with uh, story points and so forth so that people can get a sense of when it started um, and when it's likely to end and so forth. So, yeah, I think I think we need some custom fields just to summarize. And I think we need better yeah. hierarchies and groupings. If we have grouping, then it's going to be a lot easier to understand. Oh, this chunk of work is like six weeks, but we need this before the next one. That's why we cannot release, you know, on, on October 22nd. Right? Right. So, the more of that, then you can have like you can zoom out, and then it will look like a spreadsheet, hopefully, in the end, but automated, like Arnold suggested. Right? Yeah. So we are always in sync. It yep. requires some work. Yeah, yeah. It requires Jira is complex. You know, it's complicated. 
Right. Nobody knows how to configure it. And, and <laughs> yeah. if they did, they don't have access to it to configure it. So it's not, yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. a little bit of a catch 22. Uh, there was one point when I was fumbling around trying to configure it and then apparently somebody got in trouble. So, uh, anyway, <laughs> um, well, I will say, uh, Mark Ford did a great job with, with our view of it. I know that still similar problem that to, to get deeper in, you probably need different credentialing, but, um, Mark's done a nice job with the sawtooth dashboards. <laughs> Okay, next up is Hart. Somebody's powered up. Yeah, hey. Um, so I just wanted to provide a brief update from the white paper working group. So I think we are finally nearing uh, imminent completion for what we will call an introduction to Hyperledger. Um, and we wanted to encourage everyone, uh, particularly the TSC members, to read over the paper. Um, you can find it on GitHub in the Hyperledger WP directory. Um, if you'd like to take a look, or if, if people want, I can, you know, send it out to the TSC list. Um, so we feel like we're in a pretty steady state at this point. Uh, we're happy with the kind of overall structure and layout. Um, it's written up basically as we agreed or rather as the TSC agreed uh, back almost a year ago. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Uh, please take a look, uh, give us feedback. Um, and if you have suggestions, then you're welcome to issue a pull request uh, and suggest those changes. Um, does, does anybody have any questions? Should people Hart, be do you using... have the uh, link for for uh, ease of access for everybody? Yeah, everybody's been posting it in the chat there, Dan. So. Oh. oh, I see my chat hadn't updated. Got it. Should um, general stuff like that go to the announce list versus the TSC list? Does the announce list have a bigger audience? Do we know? So I, I think the, the process that we were using was to sort of have the TSC sort of review and give them an opportunity to to weigh in if they hadn't already been doing so. Uh, and then we can send it to the, you know, the various spam lists. And then yeah, uh, probably would be worthwhile to have Art, uh, maybe you or Mick, uh, put together a blog post to um, uh, sort of announce it give it a little bit of context and that we can use for promoting it. Yeah, um, sure. Yeah, I, I think, think that would be a great idea. Oh, that's a sorry, great go idea. ahead, Hart. <laughs> no, 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 I was just going to say our future plan is to uh, give it a couple weeks of review and then um, then pass it over to some of the technical writers that helped with the things like the architecture document to make it pretty. Um, and then we'll hand it off basically to the marketing department from there. And I know Brian's not on, but um, I think the the last time we ran it up, or we, we started, we, we were talking about letting the, the board have a, a look at it as well. Um, yeah, I don't know what the procedure would be for that, but if they want to take a look yeah. there, welcome to. Or at least give them, you know, a heads up and so forth. Uh, I'll, uh, Hart, I'll, I'll ping Brian and copy you and we'll figure out if that's necessary. Okay, thank you very much. All right. And that, that PDF, that's uh, the build of the, whatever the last was of the last uh, version of, of the source doc. Yeah, paper.pdf. That's is correct. Build. Any other questions? I think we're good. Um, so unless there's any other uh, agenda items, I think we can probably uh, call it a day, give everybody half an hour back. I, 
I want to make a quick announcement, if you will, that uh, Performance and Scale Working Group has moved to a weekly meeting. Um, we're actually working through what a transaction is and how to measure throughput, things like that. And it's been some really interesting technical discussions. Meetings are Tuesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern time. Um, if people want to just sit in and learn, I, I've been learning a lot on these calls. And uh, it's really interesting because it seems, you know, a transaction is pretty simple, but when we get into um, distributed ledgers, you know, and when it's, when it's final and things like that, it's some really interesting discussions. If people are interested and want to join the conversation or just sit in and listen, feel free to join the calls. Excellent. I'm glad to hear that. Um, and actually, Mark, it, uh, I, I, I answered a, an email to the Fabric List this morning. Somebody was looking for performance numbers, and I basically told them nicely to pound sand. Um, I, I wonder if we could maybe even just have a, in the, maybe the wiki page for the performance and, and uh, scaling working group just sort of a statement that we're, you know, we aren't publishing numbers about any of our, you know, the projects here at Hyperledger, and then, you know, give some of the rationale of why that would be inappropriate at this point in time, and and that the the performance and scale working group is is looking to to work on that. Would would, would that be something you could do to update the uh, the wiki, and then we can just point people to that? Yeah, that's a great suggestion. I'll uh, make sure that gets implemented by the end of the week. Cool. Thanks. All right. Well, if that's um, if that's it, then I'll give everyone a half an hour back, and uh, everybody can join Dan in half an hour. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Okay, bye.